Well, greetings everybody. Welcome to our King's channel. I did a recording earlier. I just haven't edited the video yet. Didn't plan on doing so for a little bit because I didn't want to, you know, stockpile too many videos. It causes people not to click on the watch because they probably get as sick of listening to my voice as I do. But I'm hoping that here on our King's channel, it's going to wow you. There was a, a video that I went out and I was watching here earlier, and I've been watching a lot of videos on Bigfoot and paranormal and things of that sort here lately. And it's a subject matter, you know, where there's not a whole lot of disagreements that lead to problems such as speaking scriptures do. And so I watch a lot of these videos that certain people bring forth, and they're speaking just like I am to you, but they're bringing forth records of old, showing newspaper clips from the 1800s and such, showing there was an existence of what they call Bigfoot today, and there's also these other creatures. But to sum it up, you know, we can take a look here in 1 Corinthians, and it says, But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which Yahweh has prepared for those who love him. Now, it's not just speaking of the mysteries, you know, and the blessings we're going to acquire for our eternal life in our Heavenly Father's presence and the presence of our King standing right there with us while we might be at the same time fishing and at the same time camping and at the same time doing this or doing that because Messiah could be in a million billion places at one time and if you acquire salvation and you are granted immortality at the time our Messiah returns raising the dead okay that only the ones that had opportunity for salvation and those who had that opportunity but turned aside, they accounted it as nothing, like Esau and such, will be raised on that first resurrection and they'll be condemned. But those like Father Abraham and Adam and Moshe and all the people in between and Enoch, they'll be raised up from the dead to be part of the priestly family of Father Yahweh. They'll be the kings and the priests in the kingdom to come. The 144,000 is just a remnant of that number that was prophesied of in these last days. And if you've been watching, you know, where the truckers there have held up Canada, desiring that mandates be dropped, after you watch the video that's to come, the one that we just done, a few back up until now, which is where I got a brand new clip to show you of a fellow that I had been watching and listening to a tale he was bringing forth. It says they tried to get into our home. They were scared all night. And it's like 18, 19 minutes long. But this is put out by Abnormal Investigations, January 30th, 2022. And my comment says, greetings and hey, did you notice the orb, the dead, flying around your head while you were talking? And then I show where the orb comes about. I'll show that here a little later. The next video, I show where Crystal Clay, who I truly love, you know, and I love Mike from the other video there as well, where I'll show that these individuals are Christians, and therefore it's more likely that they'll have orbs that are as if they was righteous, being light, you know, light in color. And I'll tell you, no holy spirits are going to be around those that are eating pork or breaking our Heavenly Father's laws if they're keeping Christmas or Easter or Halloween. And I mean no malice to anybody. Everybody has the spirits around them. I brought out in videos long ago even where you have to have at least two devils around you at all times because you need two witnesses to put you to death. And here we're speaking the second death. There's at least two devils that are sitting there and they're writing down every single thing you say and do. They don't know enough to be able to read your thoughts, but they write down everything about you. There's books being written. Eyes have not seen or ears heard, you know, some of these things that are taking place. And not just the blessings in store for those that make it. 
But in the next video, I'm going to show you about Crystal Clay here. And I, like I said, I really like her. I, show, I, I really hope she'll come to the gathering place and seek the truth. But I'll be showing the orb of Mike in this video, which is a prelude for the next video. And I wanted to get back to the part where I had been negligent. I went off on a different avenue when I was addressing the comment from J-Man that's found down here on the cult of BHI Hebrew Israelites question and answer from November 30, 2021. You could look that up. It's from Signs and Wonders channel. And I haven't been back there, you know, for a while. I have stopped and listened a couple times, you know, and I hear a few things and I, I just pray for them that they will repent. But as stated, you know, I've been getting into more, you know, talking, not me talking, but others talking to me, telling me stories. And I really like a great story. I used to love sitting around a campfire telling stories. And here I live all alone, been here all alone. My brother just went to sleep. So for some reason, I've been really desiring to hear these stories about Sasquatch and the Wolfman, aliens, and all sorts of other things. I know they do exist. If you think they don't, please wake up and smell the roses. Anyway, J-Man, I had read the comment in the next video, but I, I didn't go to Deuteronomy or show you much of the answer that I was letting him see. I diverted to other topics, as I do a lot. <laughs> Let's rack it up to age. But anyway, J-Man had said two months ago, he says, wow, I didn't even brag, dude, because he was talking about how I gave an answer here two months ago as well to Timothy P., who started this thread. And I tell you, you should go to the comments and read them. Timothy P.'s answers are astounding. And I know what type of spirit is on Timothy P. It's not the spirit of the world, I'll tell you. But anyway, I had explained to Timothy P. how J. Man got to bragging about how he got me and you know, simply because he could yell over me or shut me off or whatever, which doesn't mean there's any winning. I'm not in this for any competition anyway, you know. There's no competition to salvation. You either do or you don't. Paralytics can acquire salvation. You don't even have to walk. If you got no tongue so you can't speak, you can still get salvation. If you have the heart to turn from your sins, you know. Anyway, J-Man had wrote and said, Wow, I didn't even brag, dude. Go watch the show again. I didn't even want to talk about the law. I didn't want to talk about the law, man. He says, You brought it up, speaking of me. I wanted to switch back to the main topic, which, of course, is the cult of the BHI, you know, which these cults, or that cult, declares that they keep the laws, but he don't want to talk about the laws. Though that is the subject, and he tries to squirrel out, I wanted to switch back to the main topic. Then you kept going, yes, and wouldn't let it go. Absolutely not. So I told you not to start, then you did. And then you made the scripture about the schoolmaster say something you wanted it to say that it didn't even say. No, I, I showed what the schoolmaster was, but you couldn't understand it, J-Man, because you're deaf and you're blind and you're a Christian Canaanite and you can't help it. And the spirits you got won't allow you to see. And right now it's not your fault. It's prophesied that you can't. The whole world's deceived. Revelation 12 verse 9 explains it. Furthering, J-Man says, I left because you'll kept talking about something that was not the main topic of discussion that I had already said I didn't want to talk about, the law. You're the one who brought it up, so stop lying, Al. Lying is a sin. Stop doing it. And I wrote him back, you know, and apologized for being so late on answering. I didn't get notified. But I pointed out a little in Deuteronomy chapter 6, and I do want to run through this real quick, and then I'll show you a real live dead one flying around as I had stated and we'll slow it down so you can see it really well and I, I mean no malice to the men and women that these things are taking place with it's just that not often do these things allow themselves to be seen and if they was holy spirits they most likely did not get seen because they're not into these parlor tricks or anything okay if they come they're gonna come to you as a cat or a dog or you know, 
a tree or a daffodil that will come to you as a man or a woman or a child or a bird or a butterfly. They can come as anything they so desire. Our Messiah came back as if he was in the flesh and Thomas stuck fingers in him and repented, you know, for being a bonehead. But anyway, to answer J-Man as to why I speak the law and why he's walking incorrectly because he don't want to hear it and actually leaves because the law is brought up, showing him exposing his sins. So he leaves and makes excuses and turns it on me. It's okay. I want everyone to understand this here. And please understand, spirits are everywhere. <laughs> It's not like I'm saying because I show a real live spirit, except, of course, for Perry, the lying preacher that I brought a video out about a while ago. And I'm going to give another clip of that as well, slowed down so you can actually see the dead in Perry's house, which are very dark, the same as Perry's soul, because of the doctrines of demons that he teaches, but as in crystals and mics examples wherein the dead show themselves you'll be amazed because crystal can actually see them not all of them of course but she sees some of them and i just received word from mike that he gave me a thumbs up i guess from when i explained to him that i caught the little critter there you know in action on his video but as far as one not wanting to listen to the law, listen to what this says in Deuteronomy 6, starting verse 1, it says, Now this is the commandment, and these are the statutes and judgments which Yahweh your Father has commanded to teach you, that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess. Well, in Deuteronomy like 30 or 31, our Father lets Moshe know that when they go off into that land to possess it, they're going to go a-whoring after the gods of the land they go to possess. And today the whole world is worshiping those gods they went to whore after. Those are the Phoenicians and the Canaanites. When you call on Lord, you're calling on Baal or Baal. And when you call on God, whether a big G or little G or all capital letter G, O-D, you're calling on Elohim. Or Eloa, Elia, El, the chiefest deity of the Phoenicians and Canaanites. Here they was commanded earlier, you know, that they were supposed to keep these commandments, the statutes and judgments which Yahweh your father has commanded to teach you, that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess. And please keep in mind, all the parents of those that left Egypt to go off into the promised land, they all died off. There's like Caleb and Yahshua is about the only ones of the adults that went off out of Egypt that didn't die in the wilderness because they wouldn't do these things. Furthering, it says that you may fear Yahweh your father to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you, you and your son and your grandson, all the days of your life, and that your days may be prolonged. Therefore hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe it, that it may be well with you, and that you may multiply greatly, as the father of your fathers has promised you a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh your father, Yahweh is one. You shall love Yahweh your father with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. And please keep in mind, that's exactly what the lawyers brought up to our Messiah, saying, Teacher, here in Matthew 22, 36, says, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Please note, here, under Deuteronomy 6, it says the great commandment here. And so it shows here, then one of them, a lawyer, this is Matthew, or Matthew 22, 35, then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, talking about my king, our king if you keep these laws and commandments and the fellow says teacher which is the great commandment in the law and our messiah says to him you shall love yahweh your father with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind right here it shows it's deuteronomy 6 verse 5 just as we were reading here but our messiah furthers a little further saying this is the first and great commandment 
just like it says in Deuteronomy 6 verse 1 right there. The greatest commandment. That's what this is entitled. And Messiah was asked about it. And then our Messiah says, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But it doesn't show any second great commandment in the alleged Old Testament. But Messiah did bring out the first greatest of the law, the commandments in the law, as you see here in verse 36, says, teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Not in the commandments, not in the Ten Commandments. You won't find this as being one of the Ten Commandments. You shall love Yahweh your Father with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Yes. And people say, oh, I love my neighbor. Oh, I love God. Well, if you love Father Yahweh, you wouldn't call him El or Elohim by the English term of God today. You'd get gods out of your life, off your mouth and your tongue. And I'm sorry to say, well, no, I'm not. You can't love our Heavenly Father, calling him names of those that he condemned. He said the children would go a whoring after the gods of that land, and they did. So now you're calling our Father a whore or a whore master, you know? When you call him God or Lord, and some are as bold to call him as Al, <laughs> and others, of course, you got the Jehovah's, and so on, but I do want to finish here, you know, showing J-Man, you know, why it is that I speak of the law when I go on someone's show or whatever. I don't go there for them just to find out personal things about me, though I'm not one that has a closed chapter on my life. It's open. When I go on a show or whatever, I'm going there to speak of our Heavenly Father's law. And tell them, if they'll listen, that you got to keep the give or take 613 laws that apply to you. There may not be all that many, but by doing that, then you are keeping the Ten Commandments. And if you don't do that, then you don't have salvation. But here in Deuteronomy 6.5, it says, You shall love Yahweh your Father with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. Now get this. You shall teach them diligently. To who? Even your children. And shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand. Meaning... And when the Sabbath comes, you're not going to let these hands work on the Sabbath. Or to do your own pleasures, you know, playing video games or whatever. You're not going to do that. But you'll listen and obey every living word of the scriptures, like Matthew chapter 4, verse 4 says, Man shall not live by Messiah alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father must man live. It says here, You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they... And they shall be as frontlets before your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. And they should be written on your inward parts. That's the new covenant. That these words that was valid in the days of Moshe out in the wilderness, they're still valid today. Nothing's changed of our Father's will. Our Father's will didn't change like the will of the parents on the earth today. Anyway, you further down through here and you see other things about being in bondage and everything. And here, of course, you got the caution against disobedience. Go ahead and read these things because it tells you what's going to come on you if you do wrong. <laughs> and it says here in Deuteronomy 6.20, and of course 6.25 we'll read down to, we quote it all the time on our King's channel. Verse 20 says, When your son asks you in time to come, saying... What is the meaning of the testimonies and statutes and the judgments which Yahweh your Father has commanded you? Then you shall say to your son, We were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt, and the Father brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Father showed signs and wonders before our eyes, great and severe, against Egypt, Pharaoh, and all his household. 
Then he brought us out from there that he might bring us in to give us the land of which he swore to our fathers. And the father, Yahweh, commanded us to observe all these statutes to fear Yahweh our father for our benefit always that he might preserve us alive as it is this day. Now please understand, this is the definition of what righteousness is. And we are commanded to become righteous. Our Messiah said, our righteousness must exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees and the scribes. And it made them all sad, you see? And if our righteousness don't exceed theirs, remember, they brought in traditions of men, the washings of hands and everything, which invite spirits of the wrong sort. But here in Deuteronomy 6.25 says, Then it will be righteousness for you and for me, for us, if we're careful to observe all these commandments before Yahweh our Father as he has commanded us. Now, I got to tell you, this is the only defense that we as believers or any that desire to believe have to get shot of these spirits and most of the time keep them at bay because the hedge that we build by keeping the laws and commandments on the foundation of the every living word, we build our character, this fence around us that prohibits the dead in most cases unless they get permission from our king and then i just do my best to ignore them and they flee but i want to show you here this stated i have no malice toward mike at all i really like this guy i enjoy listening to the stories that he brings forth and i actually did watch a few other of the videos here particularly to see if i seen any more of these orbs and i did not see any so this here is a picture live now the next video i'm going to show you some that's even more spectacular and hey it's not like mike has got lice or anything like that because there's a spirit there that comes out of him or appears to because everybody's got them you're either possessed by our heavenly father through his righteous son by holy spirit or you're possessed by satan and her minions there's no in between there's no gray area. And if you eat pork or catfish, and I, I mean no malice again, maybe nobody told you you shouldn't do such things, you know? But the Bible says not to do so. Even in the New Testament, the alleged New Testament, says to come out from among her, my people, and be separate. And it tells you, touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Which means if you touch the unclean, forget just touch but eat my word you do these things our messiah also said i'll say to them in that day i never knew you get you behind me get the hands you who practice lawlessness eating the unclean or touching or wearing the unclean thing is disobedience it's lawlessness and as as stated our heavenly father sends evil spirits through Yahshua, his righteous son, in these last days, since Yahshua took that office, but Yahshua's already defeated Satan, you know? Satan is under Yahshua's command, and Satan is necessary for the testing and trying of the saints. They like putting boils on my back and everything else, giving me colon cancer so bad when I was young, to where the sorcerers wanted to give me only six and a half weeks left to live. <laughs> I think that was back in 1990, somewhere around there. Anyway, I put it 7 minutes and 59 seconds. This video was brought out January 3rd, 2022, entitled, They Tried to Get Into Our Home. They Was Scared All Night. And I was sitting there watching this out in my lounge chair earlier. And after, I recorded the video that will come next. And I saw this and jumped up and had to come and tell him. And I watched the rest of the video as it stated, and I didn't see any more action. I could have missed it. If there was, but I did watch a few more of the videos just to see if I could see any more action. It was just an instance, and I think at the end of this video he says, God bless, you know, but Mike doesn't know any better. I've never even corresponded with Mike before. Today, when I, I wrote the comment to let him know that here it, I showed down in the comment, go around 7.59 in the video and watch carefully. So please... Watch right up here. It comes out the corner of his eye. comes up here like this. 
comes up his thing and shoots off. Okay, so we'll watch it full strength and then we'll slow it down. Here we go. You know, to go outside. Did you see it? From here, came up like this and boom, full speed again. To go outside. Okay, so let's cut this down in speed. You can't see what I'm doing because it's behind my picture here. And we'll go to point, we'll go to 25% speed. And watch, it comes right out here, voom. Uh, see it? Right here. It just come right out, voom. Let me get it back. Watch very closely. Uh, right there, voom. goes off. Now I'm not thinking, you know, that Mike is going to feel bad about what I just showed here. After all, it's right up your alley anyway, isn't it, Mike, here for abnormal investigations? Well, I'll tell you, my friend, I hope those that come to our King's channel here will go off and check out some of your videos, because I find you quite personable, and I thank you for being a down-to-home kind of guy, man, that I could drink a cup of coffee with while I listen to what you have to say and share with us, and I do appreciate it. And if you want any scriptural advice, please come to our King's channel, where I can explain to you again, you know, <laughs> if you want salvation, all you have to do is keep the give or take. 613 laws that apply to you, these define how the Ten Commandments are to be kept. Like keeping the Sabbath day holy, which is the fourth of the Ten Commandments. Well, inside the give or take 613 laws that do apply to you, it says a man shall work for six days. The seventh day is the day of rest. Another one of the laws says you're not to cook on the Sabbath. Another one of the laws says you're not to do business on the Sabbath. Another one says not to work. Another one says not to do your own pleasure. So there's five, six laws out of the 613. There's actually more laws for you to drive your car to the store, go in, buy a loaf of bread, and come back out and go back. There's more laws of man you have to follow to do that than there are for you to follow, most likely, to acquire salvation. And I'm in your corner, my friend, you know, and again, everybody, I'm not picking on anybody simply because there are things like this here. Watch again. Go outside. And once again, we'll try it at the normal speed. Which shows it a little better, actually. And everybody's got them around you. Whether you submit to what they tell you or try to lead you to do or not is between you and our king, you know? Have to go outside. That's amazing, my friends. But I'll tell you, the real purpose of them showing themselves in videos or pictures and such is to make people think that when they die, whether they're wicked or they're evil or righteous and suitable for the kingdom is that it don't matter anyway, because when you die, you're going to live forever. Well, I have to emphasize again, as I have in videos past, that, you know, you don't get immortality until you're raised from the dead, or there's a few that's going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. And at the resurrection is when the gift of immortality is given. Some it's given for salvation, and others for the eternal flames. There's even going to be some that are going to have their bodies given back to them that they'll burn inside their flesh instead of just the spirit, which I believe is a little worse because I've been there to hell for 28 hours, give or take, and endured those flames. I know that there ain't a preacher on the earth today knows about those flames. Anyway, I hope it clears up there for J-Man or anybody else why I speak about these laws. It makes the devils flee for one thing. Of course, they really did pester me the last couple of weeks, but I ignored them mostly, you know, because I know our king sent them, allowed them to come. It wasn't just a coincidence that all of them showed up like they did, having themselves a festival, but I just didn't pay them any mind. And I played more videos that spoke the truth, and they just can't handle that stuff, so they end up fleeing. So with that, my friends, you ready for the next video? J-Man, you should repent of not wanting to hear the law. 
is something that should be the utmost thing in your life that you desire to do is hear somebody speak of the law. My ears are like radars. And it sucketh greatly because mostly I hear sin being spoken. Oh, let's go to McDonald's. I want Doritos. I want a Coke. I need some short ribs. <laughs> you know, whatever it is. But it's actually spirits that most don't see. And they show themselves every now and then. And they only lead the willing into deceptions and all that sort of jazz. But we can escape by developing self-control. And you can only do that, my friends, by keeping the give or take 613 laws, practicing them. Because once you make up your mind, you want to please our Heavenly Father through His righteous Son, the gates of hell open up on your life. <laughs> and you come to find out exactly why Messiah said He didn't come to bring peace, but to bring a sword, to divide families and everything, man. You end up like me all alone. Hopefully not the rest of y'all that still have families and such. I, I pray that you're blessed and that we get gathered in very soon. And if you don't know what I'm talking about being gathered, it's spoken of in the book of Matithia. And please watch a few videos from the past where I explain the gathering. And hopefully it'll come before Passover. So let's keep our ears and eyes open for the green ears of barley on Zion as well. With that, I love y'all. Bye.